In recent years, the rise of social media has transformed the way we connect and share our lives online. Among these platforms, TikTok has emerged as a global sensation, captivating millions with short form videos and creative content. However, beneath the surface of this seemingly innocent app lies a chilling underworld of abusers, manipulators, preying on the children of this app. At first glance, TikTok appears to be a harmless playground of creativity and self-expression. Users posting lip syncing videos, dance challenges and funny skits. But as we delve deeper into the TikTok iceberg, you would discover a disturbing underbelly lurking within the platform. Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the TikTok predator iceberg explained and welcome to the second part of exploring different social medias and seeing who has the most amount of predators. I kind of just came up with the series today because I felt like doing a follow up to my YouTube predator iceberg and it actually got me thinking which social media platform will have the most amount of predators and today we're talking about the infamous TikTok and I expect TikTok will have a lot of predators because 90% of TikTok's user base are children so a predator would probably want to go on TikTok if they want to find their victims. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and enjoy the TikTok predator iceberg explained. I also forgot to add that this iceberg is structured from the most known at the top of the iceberg to the least known as we go down towards the bottom of the iceberg. And I'm sure you all know what an iceberg is, so I don't really have to explain it, but enjoy the video. The tip of the iceberg, Buddy Haynes. Buddy Haynes, also known as The Buddy on TikTok, his account was first made in 2018 in the early days of TikTok. On his account, he would describe himself as a 26 year old jujutsu athlete and gamer his early videos were videos of him attempting to dance but it really looked like someone having a fit but this seemingly innocent type content didn't gain him much traction so he started posting these weirdly disturbing videos onto the app in these videos i think he was trying to portray a sexy or seductive character and i'm not gonna lie it look he worked on me <laughs> why do good girls like bad guys i've had this question for a really long time and these videos started to gain a bit of traction and after this he started posting more and more of this bad boy character on TikTok. I guess he was feeling himself. He then carried on posting more of these terrible videos, slowly garnering him an audience of people who found his videos so bad it was good. But he really rose to fame after he caught the attention of some massive YouTubers making commentary videos about him, resulting in him gaining over 25k followers on TikTok. This then created a chain effect of more YouTubers making videos of him, causing him to become even bigger. Why do good girls like bad guys? I've had this question for a really long time. Something, something. Something I forgot. He got the cuffs. He got the cuffs, everyone. We did it. Do not let this man near you with handcuffs. Never do that. That's not a good idea. With his growth in popularity, the body's content got weirder and weirder. His content started from cringe dance videos or the infamous bad boy videos, to then transforming in him posting creepy TikTok duets involving girls who looked really, really young. Also, don't forget this guy's pushing his 30s. He carried on posting these type of videos, some being questionable and others being outright predatory, leading to people catching on and commenting on his TikToks, or as he saw it, hating on his TikToks. He actually addressed his haters in a video. To my haters, all you're doing is fueling the fire when you comment like my stuff follow me and react to my videos trying to down me you're just making it worse for you so do yourself a favor block me if you don't like my stuff if you don't like what i do block me because i will continue to do duets with my fans that love me and i will continue to do videos from my house where i live with my parents who love to support me and I support them because they need me. This video set off warning signs, so people started digging into his personal information and some people even added him on Facebook trying to find out more about his life. This actually resulted in him addressing it in another video. So as you can tell, I'm still here, but I now have another issue. I have not people that found me on Facebook. You harass me on Facebook and I will take you to the police because this is getting way too far, people. This is too far. But this was when things were about to change for the buddy. On the 2nd of October 2018, a TikToker by the name of Bit Hoje would upload play the video explaining and exposing buddy's behaviors behind the scene. Boudet talks to girls from the ages of like 12 to 15. He messages them on Instagram with very lewd videos and lewd messages and pictures, etc. A group of people, including myself, called him out on it and now law enforcement is taking- It turns out that Buddy had been messaging his underage fans and underage girls on Instagram, sending them inappropriate messages and she had receipts to back this up. In one of these chats, he sent a disgusting and inappropriate photos to the girl knowing she was underage. Another YouTuber by the name of Jay Aubrey was actually about to get the most evidence as he was even able to message the girl 
Wales back in 2018 while this entire situation was going on. The evidence was quite damning and the body couldn't deny it, right? Well, wrong. According to the body, this whole thing was a complete misunderstanding and the body would actually post a video on TikTok claiming he was hacked and it was the girl who originally exposed him that did it. But obviously no one was buying his excuse and this entire situation gained him a lot of hate on the platform, leading to him completely deleting his TikTok account. This is the end of the story, right? Buddy had been arrested and case closed. Well, wrong again, as Buddy would rise from the ashes with his extravagant return, as he was back but somehow creepier than ever and back to his old ways. Get one here, not me, so. Not fair. Like, I can't even make you blush, so it seems like make me crush on you even. The buddy situation would get even worse as the YouTuber by the name of Jadica would upload a video talking about a new experience with the buddy. And so basically it started out like this. I mean, he was just sending weird pictures with his tongue out and um, just like videos of him flipping his tongue in suggestive ways. Um, and I was like, well, do you want to start flirting then? Or what is this? And he was like, I am flirting. So I guess this is actually his idea of flirting, which is interesting i suppose and here is where i was like well you know i'm not really all that experienced in flirting and he said that i can practice on him and then that's when he said really about me saying oh i'm not that experienced in flirting you know i'm like a 16 year old girl so and then here i told him that i was bored and he said he could make it better and then i asked him what he meant by that and he said oh well i'd probably make out with you haha -ha or whatever i can't remember exactly but yeah he said that at some point it seemed that the buddy couldn't stop being catfish as many different youtubers would catfish him and catch him in the act but this time was different a youtuber by the name of activist plug who was pretending to be a 17 year old girl would actually plan and go through with me and upper buddy the youtuber would record as he confronted buggy about his action this would seemingly be the end of the buddy as he would stop posting tiktoks and become a twitch streamer but nothing really came from that but in the end he would delete all his social media and disappear this is the end of the buddy right well wrong again as on january 25th 2021 he would come back to the internet after 18 months of radio silence and on his youtube channel papa freak he would finally address the allegations we are going to clear the air about the allegations that are surrounding me paul breach paul breach also known as snapchat eye on tiktok is an english tiktoker and social media personality best known for his cringe and more recently being a predator he started his tiktok account in 2021 where he would go to post dance videos and incredibly insufferable lip syncing videos in 2021 paul would go viral after he posted a lip syncing and dancing video in a now deleted song about the footballer jack Grealish and how everyone became obsessed with him during the euros paul managed to garner a massive following on tiktok rather quickly as people found him so cringe it was entertaining as he would end up being the butt of most of the jokes. People were intrigued by Paul because he was a man in his 40s still acting like he was a teenager but his seemingly harmless and cringe persona would quickly be destroyed as he would be faced with many serious allegations. And then I got this message and it knocked me fucking sick. Um, essentially a minor has contacted me to let me know that Paul was messaging them because they were sick and this is the second time we have seen him do something similar. Allegedly he was also messaging a girl who had cancer and liking their photos. Obviously I have made the screenshots so you cannot tell who they are because they are a minor. A TikTok account by the name of My Name Is Boo made a video talking about the time Paul messaged the 15 year old girl. In January of 2014, Paul had announced the pregnancy of his girlfriend in 2014 and Paul was much, much older than her. And people even found screenshots of an alleged photo of Paul and this girl when she was just 11 years old. Expectedly, Paul was called out for this, but he refused to address it and denied getting a 16 year old pregnant. There's a lot more about Paul. And if we fall down this rabbit hole, we'll be here for hours. So it's time to go on to the next creep, Johnny Elbows. Johnny Elbows, also known as Johnny Thornington, is a special needs TikTok personality often featured on the profile of TikToker The Under Faker, who's based in Oklahoma, Nebraska. Johnny Elbows first went viral in 2022 for a video of him hitting the gritty, which was made into many memes. Videos featuring Johnny Elbows became increasingly more viral in 2023, including one of him doing the raw and the infamous You Gotta Be Quicker Than That Buddy video. This resulted in many fan edits of Johnny Elbow, spawning a cult following on the app. Despite having his own TikTok page, Johnny Elbows didn't achieve virality on his own. Instead, he went viral on the TikTok page of Big Boy Yufama, who started filming videos with Johnny in July 2022. On May 18th, 2023, Big Boy Yufama went live with Johnny Elbows in a park where there were younger girls running around, and Johnny Elbows made a remark on a little girl's butt, calling it cute. They won't bother you, you know what I mean? No, John, what, what, uh, no, dude, no, dude. No, not her, not her. 
No, dude. No, I man. Want to no, dude. Yeah. No, bro. That's not no, bro. This understandably created a large uproar. And people calling Johnny Elbow is a predator. Due to Johnny Elbow's remarks, his partner Big Boy posted a response video in which he condemned Johnny Elbow's statements and claimed that he was going to stop making content with him and also deleted all his previous content with Johnny Elbow's. Dylan Zippy. Dylan Zippy is a TikToker known for his insufferable lip syncing and POV style skits on TikTok. He made his TikTok debut during the summer of 2020, posting his infamous and disgustingly cringe POV videos. However, Dylan Zippy had been receiving backlash because he was accused of being a pedo. In fact, it's said that he is confirmed to be a pedo who was texting a 13 year old girl when he was over the age of 18. This controversy resulted in his TikTok account being removed from the platform. The surface of the iceberg, Tony Lopez. Tony Lopez is an American TikToker who is one half of the popular duo, the Lopez brothers, alongside his brother Andreas Lopez. He has a popular TikTok account which has amassed over 23 million followers that features incredibly cringy dance performances as well as short comedic and lip syncing videos but it's a surprise that he still has his platform because he's been accused of sexual battery and emotional distress by two teenage girls. In a filed lawsuit obtained by People, the two girls who use different aliases HL Doe and CH Doe both claimed the 21 year old social media star attempted to coerce them into sexual encounters and solicited explicit photos from them despite knowing they were underage. This case arises out of injuries suffered by minor plaintiff after they were lured, persuaded, coerced and groomed to either engage in physical sexual sexual acts and or send explicit and obscene CP images of themselves to the defendant as a result of the defendant's illegal act. The lawsuit alleges that Tony Lopez knew that the two girls and the other victims not named in the complaints were minors. Tony denied the allegation. According to the lawsuit, one of the girls engaged in unlawful sexual acts with Tony Lopez, including both oral and the other type of intercourse with her on January 4th, 2020. The teenager claimed she told Tony Lopez she was only 16 years old at the time, but later admitted to him that she was actually 15. The teenager alleges that Tony urged her to keep their relationship a secret. In the court documents, one of the teenagers alleges she met Tony in April 2020 when she was invited to the high pass by co-founder Tom Peru. There she claimed she exchanged social media info with Tony Lopez and also gave him her phone number. In DMs, Tony Lopez acknowledged numerous times that the victim was a minor and would commonly tell her to stop being 16. One of the teenagers went on to allege that despite knowing she was 16 at the time, Tony began solicitating nude photos from her, including one message that he said show me your boobs. The teenager also claims that Tony sent her photos of his exposed willy and repeatedly asked her to meet him to have sex. According to the lawsuit, Tony coerced and solicited both teenagers to perform sexual acts on him. And in August, he issued an apology saying he planned to hold himself accountable and responsible for his mistakes rather than run from it. Lou Jaime. Lou Jaime is a 21 year old TikToker who makes bang average TikToks. Nothing really too weird or special to draw negative attention. He uploads videos of him singing in a very questionable way but hey, who am I to judge? He also posts somewhat cringy thirst trappy videos that are very questionable at that but that's just the norm for TikTok I guess. But his seemingly innocent facade was quickly destroyed as he was faced with allegations of him talking and grooming minors as in 2021 when he was 19 some discord and instagram messages of his got leaked and in the messages he was having very disturbing conversations with a minor. This instantly ruined his career leading to some people he was working with on TikTok cutting him off. Gemini official. Gemini is a 20 year old TikTok TikToker who had amassed a following of 3.5 million people on TikTok. He rose to fame around mid-2020 of his Can I Have a Peppermint video and his weird duets and stitches. Off the back of his Peppermint video, his TikTok exploded gaining him a massive audience but all of this would soon come crashing down when he was exposed in late 2020 for talking and having sexual intercourse with a 15 year old girl. Basically, I got with this girl and she's 15 years old and that was a situation. After the fact, I found out that she was 15 and I still kept talking talking to her. So much so that I asked to FaceTime fuck, which is There's an event going on in Los Angeles that Gemini was attending. And I had Gemini on staff and he asked me to come over. The first night he asked me to come over, it was a Thursday and I said no because I had school the next day. And then the next day he asked me again to come over and I told him I couldn't go over there, I couldn't drive because I was 15 and I told him that in bigger hole. So in a moment of weakness, I agreed and I got in the Uber and I went over there. No, 
know, I'm not going to go into details as of what happened in the hotel. He actually addressed the situation by making an apology and an explaining video. In the video, Gemini explained the situation from his point of view, claiming he didn't know the girl was 15 when he paid for her Uber. He also apologized as he kept talking to her after realizing her age. The surface of the iceberg, Trey Sellers. Trayvon Sellers, also known as What's Up Sir on YouTube and TikTok. He's known for his very controversial pranks and skits, which gained him 10k followers on YouTube and TikTok. Trayvon had a very controversial presence on social media, with a lot of his pranks being very unfunny at best and outright cruel at worst. From his homeless man prank where he bought a homeless man Wendy's and proceeded to eat the meal in front of him, to his other stupid and ridiculous pranks. But after this video went viral online, he addressed the matter on social media. Sellers claimed that the video was edited to make him look like the bad guy, claiming it was fake. But Trey had been under a lot of fire recently, as there had been a video of him trying to explain himself talking to, grooming and having intercourse with a minor. But his career is over before it even started. Life, my dick has never been inside of this bitch. <laughs> Uh, there was a girl I was involved with and she performed something on me oh. and vice versa. Uh, not knowing her age, she told me she was turning 18. Told me she was turning 18. So she's turning 18, right? My Okay, so we're like five months older, right? <laughs> Difference, okay? Who cares, right? I did it. Should I have done that? Whatever, okay? But niggas are 20 with 15 year olds every day. Anyway, so, all right. Fast forward. I find out this bitch is real age. I'm like, yo, I can't do this anymore, we're done. Dan Silly. Dan Silly, who is known as the Downtown Predator, was known in downtown LA for videotaping passing women and making distasteful comments to them. But if you watched his video, you can notice a similarity to all these girls. They were underage girls. He would spend his time roaming the streets, harassing any woman that crossed his path, gaining him notoriety in the area as a person to avoid. But it wasn't just LA he terrorized. On his YouTube channel and TikTok, he would document himself trying to pick up women, with the videos being very cringe and uncomfortable and some outright harassment. These videos were always creepy resulting in the women he harassed being very uncomfortable resulting in some of them calling the police and some even running away. Throughout his disturbing videos he would talk about how he felt and he would even state that he felt America was too safe for women. In this place the, the place is too safe with police. In other countries it's way less safe. In order to get a bodyguard man you know that will protect you you need to be a good woman you need to act well. But in here, here is that women don't need to act well, so therefore, he even admitted in one of his videos that he believed that consent was a myth and in more of his videos he spoke about his disturbing incel ideology but as I stated earlier the more you watched his videos the more you realize many of these girls he was approaching were children and even when he knew they were underage he would keep going pressing on even harder and it was no surprise that Dan was a registered sex offender with a high risk of reoffending as it was revealed that Dan was arrested for acting inappropriately with a 15 year old girl filming her butt and posting it on YouTube. Why this guy is allowed to roam free is beyond on me. Jupiter. Corbin Pennell, also known as Jupiter, is a very interesting TikToker who rose to fame because he was a predator. He became popular off an incredibly cringe video that blew up of him talking in a Snapchat video. Jupiter had been exposed for talking to girls who was 13 and he was even seen on livestream saying he wanted the age of consent to be lowered to 15. I actually want to move on quickly from this guy because he's actually just too weird but as we go deeper down this iceberg it gets even weirder. Robert Moores. Robert Moores was a 36 year old man known for repeatedly asking his victims what type of underwear she was wearing. Robert Moses is a disgusting character who deserves nothing but life in jail. Moses was a predator who spoke to an 8 year old girl on TikTok who had many requests for the young girl. Moses pretended to be a 12 year old boy who dared the girl to ask her brother to expose his genitals for 5 seconds. Moses conversation with the victim actually moved from TikTok to WhatsApp where he would go by the name GoldenEye0073. A second victim who was 10 when she was contacted by Moses on TikTok was asked what she was wearing. He suggested she removed her underwear and had a lot more explicit messages with her. The messages were discovered when the girl approached her father, shaking and crying and showed him the social media conversation. Moose was arrested two days later of the incident and his mobile phone was seized. When his phone was searched by the police, it was said that 95 counts of CP was actually found in his phone, which resulted in him being jailed for four years at Oxford Crown Court. The depths of the iceberg. Brandon Heberlim. Brandon Heberlim is a TikToker who rose to fame off a TikTok he made asking Dixie D'Amelio out for 
for a day and asking her how she got famous on TikTok. This video blew up on TikTok getting millions of views but just as quickly as he rose to fame, he fell off even quicker leading to him clawing at what relevancy he had left. So he started to make these weird TikToks where he would tell jokes relating to the meme No Not November. Brandon would be accused of talking to a 12 year old girl when he was 18 and he also admitted to kissing a 9 year old girl in a mental breakdown on his TikTok live. Leslie Clark Leslie Clark also known as I post about my ex on TikTok is a TikToker who was infamous for being a predator, a scammer, a racist and a homophobe. Leslie Clark was called out in a live stream by three people for talking to minors and sending explicit photos to an underage boy who was just 15 at the time. She did admit to sending photos but denied knowing she was 15. Just like Paul Breach the Leslie Clark rabbit hole goes way deeper than this but today we're just covering the predatory aspect of her. Zoe Laverne Zoe Laverne is an American TikToker and YouTuber who is known for lip syncing and dance videos. Zoe Laverne began her social media career by creating lip sync videos on Musical.ly, now transforming into the TikTok app. Her early content was well received on TikTok as she gained a steady following. Zoe's popularity on the app grew rapidly as she started gaining millions of followers within a few months and one of Zoe's most popular videos was a lip sync to the song Juicy by Doja Cat. This video went insanely viral but her career took a nosedive in 2020 after a video surfaced depicting the 19 year old kissing a 13 year old boy which resulted in public allegations of child grooming and her being a predator. Zoe claimed that her and the minor in question had formed a close friendship however she did recognize how inappropriate her behavior was and the age difference between her and the boy she kissed. Jambi Arby Jambi Arby is a 51 year old man who professed his love to a 10 year old girl on TikTok and arranged to meet her after school. The girl's father saw the messages and asked her teachers not to allow his daughter to leave school after class was dismissed. On the day of the incident however, the father went to fetch his daughter after school only to find that she had already left. The man who led her away was Singaporean Jambi Arby who took her to lunch and to an arcade. He then brought the girl to his home, locked the door and did very unspeakable things to her. Jambi was sentenced to one year and 11 months in jail on one charge of molesting a victim under the age of 14 which he pleaded guilty to. How this guy got such lenient sentencing in prison it's also crazy to me. 